Hey, what's happening, everybody? This is Captain RL with Bottom Fishing 24 7. And today, I got something for you guys. I want to talk about the barometer, a little bit newer science that's out, and how it affects, especially bottom fishing. It affects all fish, as we all know, but so does the weather. And what's really crazy is so does even the seas and the falling and rising of normal currents. It's not just storms. So stand by. I got it all for you coming up. Thanks for watching Bottom Fish 24-7. And here we go. And today I wanted to discuss with you guys what we know about the barometer and fishing, especially bottom fishing. And it applies to other fish as well. But this, this also has to be looked at in a way that enclosed reservoirs and lakes um, you know, like freshwater or even a saltwater enclosed lake that's, you know, got a, a feed from the ocean or a creek that's that's brackish or whatever it may be enclosed in any way. It would maybe may be different. But what we know about pressure, about barometric pressure on fish is, uh, is pretty amazing. It's, it's not as big a thing as you think it is. And um, what we've learned is, is that a normal ocean pressure is around... 30.00 is about a level even, you know, quote unquote, even pressure, a normal pressure for the ocean surface, you know, across the whole ocean. So about 30.0, that would be somewhat of a normal barometric pressure for the ocean. And this would affect an enclosed reservoir or lake, possibly, possibly differently than it will open ocean. But we're discussing open ocean barometer readings and how it affects your fishing especially bottom fish. Now, the, the, the pressure underneath the water is known as hydrostatic pressure. We go by barometric pressure. The fish don't know what any of it means, obviously, but they know something's happening. But this is, this is all about the hydrostatic pressure a fish feels. Now, real quick, what's amazing is, and this is, this is scientifically proven stuff, is that a fish chasing your lure say um say there's a fish on the bottom say you're in 100 say you're in 150 feet and uh say, say you're jigging or you're bait fishing say you're five feet off the bottom you just can't get a bite no matter what where you put your bait you know turns out it takes a toll on the fish to go after that lure there's a small toll to be taken and sometimes when they're not feeding aggressively because of that pressure whatever that that number may be the biggest thing is that fish is more susceptible to feeling a pressure change chasing your lure three or four feet from where he's at on the bottom and the call wherever he's at. He's going to feel a pressure change greater than any barometric pressure change from a storm or a front could cause. Just from him having to move that two, three, four, five feet, that, that just self-created pressure it takes to chase your lure or a bait that's way more on him than a passing front would be. That's pretty amazing. I mean, this is, this is proven stuff. So that puts us in a, in a different position of thinking about this um, when you look at the science of it, which I, I, love, I love to do. I want to know the science behind every single thing. This is why I'm bringing it, bringing it to you guys. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of theory about the fish. Their bladders, you know, their bladders are, 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 um, expand and get bigger. They get uncomfortable with the depth they're at, and that's true. They do. So, so with a passing front, the fish just finds a, a foot or two or, or more in the column where he's where he feels where he feels best for his for his bladder. Um, that's that's where he's going to be. And if you don't if you don't fish that depth properly, and you won't catch a fish. And that usually happens, you know, in a rapidly uh, rising barometer is when that happens. And so it might make the fish move a couple of feet up or down or a few feet up and down, depending on the depth and, and how, how great the pressure uh, trend is upward. And uh, the downward pressure, it does seem to get fish feeding. We all know that before a storm, uh, the, the fishing can be really good right before a storm. But I think that the hydrostatic pressure on a fish just moving a few feet to, to get your lure it's so bad on him, you know, the way it's written is it's so hard on him that it did no storm could create a force of him moving that three or four feet to chase your lure. Nothing can, nothing can come close to the pressure change that creates on a fish. So the important point is 
there are normal changes in hydrostatic pressure in the ocean that fish can tolerate that are far larger than what happened with any barometric pressure change. So if you look at the science, barometric pressure changes are just trivial to a fish compared to normal pressure changes that occur below the ocean surface. So a barometric change is trivial compared to a hydrostatic change uh, that occurs below the ocean surface. In other words, okay, that could be a lot of things, right? Hydrostatic is underwater. Water is what? 800 times more dense than air. So a lot, a lot of things can affect how that fish feels, whatever fish it may be. We're talking about whoever his name is, whatever he is, a group or a snapper, um, you know, whatever, whatever it may be that's, that's down there. So he can even tell what affects them under the ocean we're talking about. Okay, the hydrostatic pressure. So let's scratch the barometer for a minute. We got stuff like seas. Three to four foot seas, it's, a, it's used in the science, is about six seconds. So that, which is a stout, stiff, you know, tall wave with no back on it, basically. And it's terrible when it gets down to three to six seconds. You know, it's not great. I'm like 15 myself, but you don't get that all the time. So... They, they, those pressure from the waves, especially in, 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 in shallower depths, really affects the fish greater than any barometer change. So if it's rough for whatever reason, right? So a northeaster, a cold front comes, it sweeps out, it, it sweeps over the east coast, the west coast, whatever it may be, and the pressure goes through the roof. We automatically know, and we've been taught that when that, when that, when that front goes by, the pressure is going to go up because it does. But what else happens? The wind blows, right? So that's one factor that's going to keep you off the water is the wind. We also know that a rising barometer affects the fish, right? But it's not affecting it. The barometer itself isn't affecting it as much as the waves that a northeaster creates. You know, a northeaster makes, makes it terribly rough on the ocean. But is it more the waves creating the hydrostatic pressure for the fish under the water or is it the barometer rising and the answer is, is that it's both so where does that put us in terms of what we need to do to, to catch fish well the science says a couple different things and all this is of course up for debate but this is this is interesting stuff to me because it makes perfect sense the hydrostatic pressure in the ocean is normal it's normal nuances that it, that it goes through in a day or two of getting rough, calm, rough. Even the change in tide height. Now in South Florida, you get a couple of feet of tide, foot of tide, two foot of tide. As you get further north, you get, you get into shallower plains. It's, further, it's, it's shallower further out, and you get into some, some really crazy tides that can move, you know, seven, eight, nine foot. And um, just a two or three foot change from the tide going in or out, that's a hydrostatic change on the fish that no barometer change from any kind of hurricane or storm could create that kind of pressure on the fish just from the tide falling in and out. Now, of course, he adapts. And that's where we as fishermen have to adapt to how all that works, too. And um, does it make them bite less or more? It evidently does not. Although we, we are mind-driven to think as bottom fishermen and bass fishermen, whatever you may be, we're talking about the ocean here, but we're, we're driven to think that the barometer really, really is the problem here. And um, evidently, it's not as big of a factor as we think it is. It's, it's, uh, it matters. It's because it changes, the, it changes the seas and it changes the weather. And as you guys know, northeasters especially is the big driver here, you know, after a front or, or straight north wind, even northwest in the winter, the cold wind, um, it causes currents to change faster. It causes rough water. Uh, all that stuff is the big factors, all, along with that pressure change that's going to put the effect on this fish's bladder. So if he's already uncomfortable, we're going to say he has, uh, it's a grouper, right? That grouper's already uncomfortable because it's rough. He's already pissed. And uh, he may not want to mess with your bait that day, especially if he's got to exert another pressure on himself to chase your lure. And this is where I think slow pitch really, really shines because 
is if you've got a slow pitch jig, you know we're we're presenting a jig in a way the fish there's no way he's going to turn it down. The fish has been injured by another fish hitting a school of bait, and that fish has just gotten injured so bad that he's he's doing this. He's wobbling at the bottom. He's hurt. He's damaged. Those other fish see it. Um, those those bottom fish see it. My Mister Grouper there, he sees it. And if you keep pitching that at him, he's not going to put up with it very long. But he doesn't want to chase it very far, right? He's not going to want to chase it. So we got to put it in his face. And what better way to present that? A live bait's going to want to run away from him, right? But if we pitch that slow pitch jig right in front of him, enough times it's during our drifts in an area. That's why I like to cover an, a- an area for so long with that trolling motor. I want to move up and down that area where it'll be a ledge, live bottom, a little piece of live bottom, you know, um, some natural coral bottom. Uh, some limestone, I mean, a wreck, whatever it is, concrete, doesn't matter what. I want to cover it so good. And I, and I want to pitch that jig so many times to make sure that we, had, we hadn't left one behind from, I don't care what the depth is, but that, that's, what, that's, that's what we're going to do. And if, that, if, if you present that right, he, that fish, he'll have to chase that live bait you put down there. He don't want to do that during those kinds of pressure changes more than likely. There's going to be some fish you're not going to, you know, you catch fish sometimes, of course, but that fish may not chase that live bait that day. The pressure changes from rough seas, the barometer itself, and the hydrostatic changes on his bladder and his body. He may not like that, and he may not chase that live bait. So, therefore, we got to put some in his face that looks really intriguing to him, which is why Norhito Sato over in Japan invented slow pitch jigging. You know, this, this is why he did that. Slow pitch jigging was invented for bottom fish. It was generally made at its core principles for, for catching fish on the bottom that won't bite. So now you put weather conditions into it like we just discussed, and um, that should help you figure out that you need to be pitching a jig probably during those conditions if you're fishing in them. And it's, it's, it's three or four foot or more. Um, which I'd prefer not to fish in, but we have and will if we need to. And um, rather not fish in the northeaster, you know, if it's blowing, if it's blowing hard, unless I'm sail fishing on purpose, going out that northeaster. But we all, we all, we're all going to get in a position where we're, we're stuck in a in a nasty wind or rough sea and have to fish. And that's where that consistency in finding the depth he's happy with and presenting the jig that he wants, he being whatever group or snapper, whatever that's on the bottom, or even in the column, those fish are going to make slight adjustments. To all those pressure surroundings, the tide, remember? Remember the tide moving in or out? The seas, the height of the seas, that affects the pressure, the hydrostatic pressure under the water. And a, a, a raising hill climbing barometer or falling barometer, That's all that affects them. So we just have to find that perfect pitch on, 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 on what to do. And um, there's a lot of times where I hate to say this, uh, you guys probably going to massacre me, but this is a lot of times where a cut bait actually works better than a live bait will. In my hoochie skirts, that's when I like to use them. That's why I like to send those down with a strip piece of bonita or something of that nature on that hoochie skirt. I don't care what color it is. Y'all know that. And I'm going to put that down there and I'm just going to barely off the bottom. Just work that thing. Just work that jig. A dead bait. We, we, we don't want him to have to work because he's already been exerted these other pressures. Anyway, something to think about. You guys, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And uh, what's your favorite barometer? And uh, what do you think is the, 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 the best barometer? Is it, is it 3001? Is it 3010? Because my take on it is, is anything from 2998 to 3010 has, has been successful for us. But you got to remember... When you when you when you put your barometer number that's the favorites when you you've got it in your head or you write it in the comments wherever you whatever you think your barometer perfect number is for you that's probably when the weather was the best so we got to consider the fish in those weather and sea conditions including the tide anyway that's all I got for you today guys it's Captain Oriole Bottom Fish twenty four seven you guys have a good day fish on take care. <laughs>